Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the channel, Andy Carter here. Thanks very much for checking out today's video. And it's all about golf. It's all about my golf. I'm gonna be talking you through every single shot over the next six holes. Let's see how we can score, but also I wanna hopefully help you guys out on the understanding of the process that I go through to take a shot and the club selection, the shot selection, taking into consideration the wind, although it is flat calm and about 35 degrees today, so there's not really much weather to be taken into consideration today, but hey, well, there might be a, a draft or a gust now and again. So I'm gonna be talking you through every single shot. Let's see how low we can go. Also guys, if you are new to the channel, welcome. There's a library of content for you to go and check out. And if you've got any requests that you would like to see on the channel, please just drop them in the comment section below and I will endeavor to release them on the channel at some point very, very soon. But sit back, relax, and let's see if I can shoot a decent number and talk you through some good shots. I'll be honest, I didn't really think that intro through. I've got a bit of a dead arm from holding the tripod. So you might have to bear with me on that one. Whoa, that was a proper workout. Okay, first hole, 427 yards. It's actually the fourth hole here on the fire course at Jumeirah Golf States. I've just had a three hole warm up, so I am pumped and ready to go other than my now dead arm. There's a bunker down the middle, of, it's around about 320 to 330, so it is in range. There's a bunker on the right that's about 270 carry, so I can kind of get this ball in between the two, but I'm gonna be trying to hit a driver, because if I hit a three wood, it's gonna lead me too far into the green for my second shot. But I don't wanna hit this like full out driver. I just wanna hit a nice smooth driver, keep it short of the 320, 330 mark, so I've got a second shot onto the green. So if I catch that bunker, it's gonna make this hole very, very difficult. So sometimes with a driver, you wanna just not have to hit it full whack. Leave the 80%, leave the 15% at home and just knock it out there about 85%. However, worryingly enough, sometimes they are the good ones as well. So I'm gonna be hitting the straight of that bunker in the middle that's out, kind of out of range for an 85 85%er. Working on a couple of things in my swing at the moment, so you'll see me rehearsing those quite thoroughly. What I'm trying to do at the moment is just keep my arms working back down, my left arm right back down under my left shoulder, and I want to try and feel like my exit is slightly more left so I don't flip the hands. I've got a real bad tendency to flip the hands that way through impact, so I'm really trying to stay away from that. So I'm just trying to work a little bit better on my control of the club through impact. So I'm out here for a swing purpose today as well. Right, that better sit, because that was pure and straight at the bunker that I talked about. Now, if I've left it short, it makes me look like I knew what I was doing. Let's see. Okay, well, what can I say as promised? I'm not really sure of the bunker. I'm in line with the start of it. But it's not a bad drive. 315 yard drive. Apparently that's my 85%. Now, what I was mentioning about that wing, wind, wing, wind, I was a little bit sheltered because it is downwind. It is helping. I didn't really feel it around with the trees around me. But hey, it's all worked out well. All right, distance wise, we've got 108 yards to the flag. I'm also going to zap the very front edge of the green. I've got 100 yards to the front of the green. And I know there's a big ridge that goes in the middle of this green. So I'm gonna find that, which is, and, which is 120. So now I know I can paint a picture in my head. I've got 100 to the front, 108 to the flag, and 120 till I hit the ridge. Because if I go past 120 and I go over that ridge, I've got an awful, awful putt to come. So trying to strategize where to leave this ball. Now, again, knowing the golf course that I do, anything short of that kind of 115 mark is a decent shot for a potential birdie. So I'm gonna be hitting a 54 degree. 54 degree for me goes 115 yards. Now, as I've just shown you, this is downwind, so I don't need to hit it full. A full 58 degree for me goes 105 yards, which now, you, now I say that out loud makes a lot more sense for me to do but I don't like hitting lob wedges at full power because I feel like I've got very little control of the spin. Sometimes I can flop one up there and it might only go 95 yards. Other times I might hit it out there at like 110. So I don't really feel like I have much control of the club 
through impact because of the amount of loft and the amount of spin that it creates. I would much rather, and this is massively my recommendation to you as well, I try and get myself better with those easier 50, 54, three quarter shots. So that's what I'm gonna try and play. Pitch it at 105, stop it dead at 108. Might not be enough. I've hit it about 100 yards. And because I've not hit it online, I've actually missed the green. I've actually just missed the green. I think I just talked too much. Massively talked myself out of that. Over, over complicated the shot as I was trying to explain. I think I just made myself under hit it. So I take responsibility. Don't worry, I'm not blaming everybody that's watching. Okay, so I've got a lob wedge. So now, what I tend to do with my lob wedge is I get my lead hand, I get my glove hand, and I put it more under the club so it helps me stabilize this left wrist. For this type of shot, I'm not really trying to use too much hands, I'm not trying to create loads of spin. I'm literally going to be quite stiff wristed in this lead hand and just kind of play it up to probably about here. It pitches into the upslope and it will really dive this way. It's going to be quite hard to stop it once it gets momentum going this way. It's quite a big ridge. Stand a lot closer to the ball, get the shaft of the club a lot more vertical. Not bad. Hit it into the upslope, it's just died on me. I say not bad, it's a little on the short side. Right, this has been a nearly hole, hasn't it? I've kind of hit a couple of good shots, but they've not quite been executed well enough. Let's see if I can just get away from here with a par. I've got this aiming just on the outside of the outside of the hole. I'm gonna go in at dead, I like to try and go in at dead weight. Whew. It took its time, but we made it. Okay, level through one. Not bad. Shouldn't be missing the green from 100 yards though. Okay, so this is legitimately the longest golf hole on this golf course. Maybe even in Dubai, I need to check that. 630 yard par five, straight down towards the tower in the distance, and it goes around the corner, down the hill for another four and a half miles. So, three good shots required here. So driver, straight really. Don't want to bring any danger into play. I can't reach it in two, so that kind of does take the pressure off the driver a little bit. I'm not overly worried about nailing it perfectly straight and getting my absolute longest drive going because I can't reach the green anyway. So slightly into wind as it always is on this hole. So find the fairway, lay up. Great little turn, it's drawing, but it needs to avoid that left bunker. Oh, it has done, yeah, it's fine. Oh, it's a good drive that. Just into that little semi rough, but not, but not bad. Test. Okay, after a decent drive, pretty happy with this situation to be honest. In front of me now, I need to try and figure out what I want to do with my second shot. Now, if I'm honest, I'm not at a stage where I think about how far I want to leave my next shot. Okay, I'm actually trying to get as close as I possibly can. But there's a bunker there on the left hand side, it's 240 yards to the top edge of the bunker to clear, to basically clear it. So if I hit a three iron, that plays right into the hands of that bunker because it's pretty much in the landing zone. If I hit a four iron, it could roll in. If I hit a five iron, my third shot is going to be like 160, which I really don't want. So I'm going to be quite bold with my club selection here, and I've got a three wood. The ball is slightly below my feet, so I'm going to aim this at the right edge of that left bunker. So I'm still not going to aim at the bunker, even if the ball does curve to the right, because I don't mind it going in the right rough. I'm using this purely for distance rather than thinking, okay, I need to hit the fairway. It doesn't need to hit the fairway. What it, the only job this needs to do, well, <laughs> I need to make it do, is not go in that left bunker, which it shouldn't do at 240. It is into wind though. So I mean, it's, gotta be, it's still gotta be a good strike. So I'm aiming just to the right edge of that left bunker that we spoke about. Clubbing behind. It's going to sit down a little bit lower into my knees, just kind of stick my backside out a little bit more and just get slightly better squat, more squatted into my posture and just get a feel for the slope. Okay, come on. 
a great strike. I'm headed straight for the bunker, but it should clear it. It should have enough to clear it. Yeah, fine, no problem. So I've chosen a club that I, I was pretty sure with a good strike, like it was, I just pulled it a touch. I was pretty sure I was gonna clear the bunker. Now, to be honest, now, clearing that bunker and being down the left side is by far the best place for me because the flag's on the far right. So I've got a better, straighter angle to the flag for my third shot. But all I wanted to do with this was get the distance out of it and avoid sand. I wanted to keep, I was happy enough if it just kind of cut away into the right rough even because what I didn't want to do was hit a club that was going to land in the bunker. And I didn't want to hit a club that was going to finish so short of it that it's going to make my third shot just as di or very difficult. Now, again, that's the way I'm playing this game. If you've got a shot on this hole, it's a, it's a long, long hole. So yeah, the, the, the advice from me would be to leave the second shot short of that bunker, third shot in and around the green, fourth shot on, two put bogey, net par. So we have to be able to dissect, reassess, analyze every single shot to play to your capabilities. All right, so I did clear the bunker, as you can see. I'm not that far over it, I'm about 10 yards over it. Obviously, it wouldn't have rolled, rolled too much. It was about a 250 carry. Really happy with the strike, into wins, a good shot. But now, what have we got left? Flag, 97. Top lip of the bunker where that rake is, is 91. And there's a big slope that goes from left to right, which is 90. So 97 yards into the flag, I've got a 54 degree, just because I can kind of pop it up there nice and high, comfortable at stopping quickly, relatively comfortable. I'm gonna clear the 95 yard mark which is what I need to do. It's slightly into wind, so I'm gonna be playing this in my head at about 100 yards, which is a nice three quarter, 54 degree. So a good flight will kind of cancel out the wind for the first half of the trajectory. It was a good strike. Is it enough club? Oh, it's just perfection. Oh, played it very well. Whew. I was a bit nervous at one stage though. Okay, so as I, I'm happy with that approach shot. I've actually played this hole pretty well so far, to be honest. Uh, decent ball striking throughout, which has kind of led me to where I am now. As you'll have seen though, they're not perfect in terms of direction as to what I, what I called, but decent ball striking. I always feel like that's the most important thing. You get your ball striking right, you generally won't miss too far off anyway, because you've struck it well and you, you're, getting, you're eating your way through the hole. So this is, this is the birdie putt. Downhill, right to left, looks fast. Certainly looks slippery. Okay, come on. Missed it left. That actually turned a lot more than I thought. I knew it was downhill left, right to left. Never quite imagined it was going to be that much. Okay, we're still level through two playing okay so far right so third hole lovely lovely hole really nice to look at can be an absolute pain to play 385 yards and so not the longest hole but bunkers left right and straight down the middle the ones down the middle are around about 300 yards from here so i've gone down to a three wood again if i go down to a three iron it leaves me around about 160 170 in which I don't really want so i want to try and get as much out of this as possible now i hit a cracking drive down here in a tournament like last week and walked off with a triple bogey because my second shot i didn't allow enough for the incline which we're going to talk about in the next shot but silly mistakes can absolutely destroy you oh it's a drilling bullet stay as you are left side of the fairway love it That'll work out quite nicely. That'll literally put me in the exact same position I was in said tournament. Okay, so to the flag, we've got 132 yards, slightly into wind, slightly uphill. Okay, so the mistake I made last time, the tees were actually further forward, so I was closer to this bunker, and I went with the gap, I went with the lob wedge, and this is what I was talking about earlier on in the video. I don't, great, I don't have great spin control with the lob wedge, so it popped up straight into the air, plopped into that green side bunker and I completely short-sided myself and it was an awful lie as well. So just from one poor decision could le lead to a seven. Probably should have led to a six to be honest, but I lost my head. So <laughs> I've got 130 to the flag, uphill into wind, which 
if there was no uphill or into wind, it'd be a nice smooth wedge, nothing major. Now, this one needs to be a nine iron. Because basically with a nine iron, I can hit about 145. So if I add that 132, if I add slope, I would say it's about, let's call it eight uphill. So that's 140, add wind. 145 this like i said sorry this goes about 150 so this is the perfect club it's just a smooth one nothing too crazy also this green's got a false front so if i land it on the first kind of five yards of the green it'll still roll back off the front edge so again got to get this into the middle of the green which is where the flag is anyway so a good smooth nine iron 145 shot like that it's drawing into the flag it needs to maybe Oh no, I like that. I think we're gonna like that guys when we get up there. That was nice. Let's get that divot before we go. Okay, so decent shot, happy with that to be honest because anything that is one, two, three yards short of that flag and it's gone straight back down the hill. So decent shot, very dangerous second shot this. So happy with where this has ended up. Let's try and now, let's try and add a conversion. So I've got a left to right put, slightly uphill as you go up there, but then it can easily run away from you on the other side. So again, I feel like this is always just a dangerous hole. Happy to take par on some holes like this, where you just think, you know what? It's a bit shorter, but it's a dangerous one. It's taken the brake a lot more and I'm not hit it anywhere near hard enough. That is, that's a bit. Right, this time when I'm in a bit short range, I'm gonna line the writing up. I've gone straight at it this time. I don't see much more of the slope left. I've ruined half of it. Yep, in we go. Not bad, not bad. Like I said, I'll take par on that all day long. Poor first put but nice little routine for the second. Okay, so par five next, 540 yards. This is what we call an opportunity hole. 540 yards, little bit of wind helping. So it's definitely reachable in two, but it's not to be taken for granted. There's bunkers all down the left, rough down the right. I do have to hit the fairway so I can get a little bit of extra distance out of the roll. So I'm gonna go on that right edge of the fairway with my little draw would be nice. Or even just a pull, I don't care, but anything on the fairway. It's trying to draw, but it's not. So it's gonna catch the right rough, it's okay. Relying on a good lie now. It's all right, not bad. Okay, not bad, in the semi rough, so it's fine actually. Decent lie, downwind I can feel it a bit more again to the flag is 218, front edge is 209, but because the flag's at the front, those bunkers are very, very much in place. So I need to thread this and I need to be accurate. 209 front edge. For me, that would be, with this wind, I could get a six iron there, but I just need to be accurate. Oh, that's my worry. Okay, I've actually chosen the five iron. Um, six iron would be perfect, but I feel like I want to hit the keep the I want to keep the ball in the air a little bit longer. I want to keep the ball in the air to about two fifteen or so, and then try and get a fast stop. So I've got a five iron. I'm going to hit a fade off that left bunker, so that should come out with a little bit more height. Uh, then it's just up to me to execute with a decent bit of control. Oh, the easy bit. Okay, so I've got feet open towards that left bunker. Flag, eight, ball aim, club aiming pretty much just left of the flag. Same swing, I've got the fade in the locker. This is gonna be a nice shot. Got it as well, that's the fade, that's the, that's the height. Stay on that line, stay on that line. Oh, the pain and the anxiety and the frustration and the pain. Oh, it bounced into the bunker. Oh. That was such a good shot, but not good enough. Oh, guys, 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 I can't. so, so unlucky. So I've hit my shot from there. You can see the ball's coming sideways. Would have hit the front edge of the green. 
and there's the flag. Such a good shot, but not good enough. Not an easy shot this now. Short side, now technically short side of myself. I've got a bit, I'm hitting up in a bit of an upslope though, which is not the, not made, made it a little bit easier. Oh, I can see the lines as it's coming. Right, I need to land this pretty much on the fringe in line with where the camera is and a little bit of release. I'm gonna massively open the face on this. I'm gonna get very, very aggressive in my technique. So I need to get this up about just, just about six foot, about a similar height to me. And I need to stop it quick. So I don't want too much roll out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the butterfly grip. So I've got previous videos on this. My left hand goes further over. My right hand goes further over. It's gonna help me open the face, cut my left and cut my left wrist as I go back. So I'm gonna get maximum loft on the face. Not much carry, so I'm gonna to have to hit this rut quite hard as I just kind of hit down into the sand and just explode it up. Okay, talk a good game. Well, not a massive amount of sand in there, to be honest. Bounced, not ideal. It's on the green, it's not bad, it's about 20 feet. Could have been better. Struggle with, <clears throat> struggle with those shots so much when it's just not much sand, but you need maximum loft. It's just a, it's just a hard shot. And what can you do? All right, so this is one of those holes where this is one of the holes where you can target for for basically the golf course to give you something back. And I'm not quite, I'm not quite so being able to take it. And what I mean by that is that the previous par five is a really hard par five for all amateur golfers, just purely because of the length and being able to hit that, that shot, a good shot consistently. The first hole we start on is one of the hardest holes on the golf course as well, due to the fact that it's got such a narrow green, and lots of danger. And it's not one of those holes where you walk off and go, I'm confident on this hole, but this hole, you're confident about trying to make something back. So if you've made like a double in a previous hole, there's always a hole that's coming up where you think, oh, I can make it back. And that's, that's what this hole gives us, but not necessarily now, because that second shot just left me. <clears throat> oh, it's a decent, oh my God. Right, now it's a, now it's a stressful hole. Um, not much in this, you can see the break as it came down this way. So going pretty much straight up the hill. Good one Lucas Herbert told me was, even if you feel like it's straight, it's gonna, it might do something. So pick a side. So I would say it's gonna be right to left, if anything, but I can't really see it. So I'm picking the inside of the right, right edge. So at least then if it does break, it's in the middle. And if it doesn't break, it's still in the hole. I thought it was a really good piece of advice because if I feel like this is straight and I aim at the stick and it just moves a touch, and then with that momentum, it misses left. It's just so frustrating, isn't it? So it's like pick a, pick a side within the hole, which I thought was really good advice, actually. Can't believe I never, can't believe I never passed that one on. Right, come on, stabilize the hands. I've got the inside right edge. Ah, oh, we're good. So that's inside right edge. Didn't move, but thankfully, it's in the hole. Then, so in the end, it was quite a stressful par, but it could have been, should have been better. And maybe an extra five or six yards carry just gets me up and over there. Still no gimme on the downhill, but oh well, played it okay. What an absolute stunning par three this is. 200 yards to the flag, water left as you can see. Bunkers right, loads of space right. But honestly, where that flag is, is absolutely brutal. So I've got a four and a five iron because it's kind of slightly into wind and off the right. But the more I look at it, it's, not, it's a five iron because, because the flag's at the back at 200, means I've got about 170 to the front. So I've got plenty of space to the front of the flag. This is one of those holes unlike the last hole where you just want to get off in regulation. So for me, I want to get off with a par. If you've got a shot, take it and run. But then again, if you hit the green, it's a different game, isn't it? But I'm going to be going, there's a, there's a chimney to the house, to the right edge of the green. I'm going to be going there with a draw because the wind's going to help it and my shot shape's going to help it. If I can get it running down that hill, that is a little bonus. There's the draw. It's right on line with the flag, to be honest. Get up, get up, get up. 
Oh, what we're going to see when we get up there is that that's not far away from probably being stone dead. It stayed up there, which is good, but I think it stopped on the upslope. Had it just got over, I feel like that would have been close, but I'm happy with that. I'll take that all day long from 200 yards. Okay, so as you can see, just caught this upslope. To be honest, it wasn't the best strike in the world, but you can appreciate how far back that flag is. You never want to miss this type of flag over the back. It would be an absolute disaster, if I'm honest. So you look at the front of the green, you go 170 there, 200 there, anything around about 185 and you're happy. So I can't moan. It wasn't amazing, but it's okay. So up the hill, it's gonna go left to right. Oh, and then it's gonna straighten out, maybe even a bit of right to left at the end. But I'm so much more focused now on pace. I've not quite got the pace of these greens today. I've left a couple fast, couple short. That's good for speed. Go on, go on, go on. I've got it. Just comb my hair, folks. Just combing my hair. I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't celebrating. I was just sweeping my quiff to the side. And I'm happy to take my paw. <laughs> oh my God, I thought that was in. All right, guys, so last hole. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do hit that like button. Also, if you're new to the channel, you've not subscribed yet, please also hit that subscribe button. 65% of the people that watch the content aren't subscribed, so it does make a big difference. So I would appreciate it if you would just give it a little click. Anyway, last hole, Bunkersville. Bunker right at 287 and bunker left at 300. So we're going to be going for the one on the left that's pretty much out of range. And I say that because the wind's slightly into my face. So I'm confident that I can hit it down that left side and I'm not gonna reach that left bunker. Staying away from the danger I know I can reach, hitting towards the danger that will take a personal best to reach. Okay, swing's held up quite nicely today. Got my swing thoughts going consistently well, which is always quite rare. Grip felt weird then. I felt like I was holding it really strong. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, just on that left rough. Do you ever feel like over the, over the ball, I just felt like I was literally holding it like this, ready to hook it. And I did. It's fine though, it's in the rough, it's fine. No problem. No problem. Okay, so not bad, not a bad t-shirt actually. Just, to, just short of this, I'm quite happy with that. Probably landed up there, just jumped down for me, so it's fine. 146 flag, 123 will clear the bunker into wind. And I always feel like this is that type of hole. You know, you get this on your golf course maybe where sometimes you feel like the wind just affects it more on a certain hole, which I never understand. So for a, for a 146, it's like a nice smooth nine iron. This is a two tiered green and that flag is on the edge of the top of the top tier. So anything short will roll down. Anything past is much better. So I'm going to punch an eight iron. And an eight iron for me can go about 165. So this is only a 145 shot really, but with the wind off my, wind's actually, is it into? It feels like it's off my back now. I don't feel like, that's just not comfortable hitting a full nine in case it literally goes. I, don't know if it, I feel like from where that flag, where I think that flag is, if it literally goes 142, it's 50 foot short. So I'm gonna punch an eight iron into this. That was a beautiful strike. Sit. That's massive. <laughs> but what a strike. Seriously, how nice does it feel when you strike it like pure? I mean, that was pure. I, I always expect to strike it well, but that was pure. Okay, so if you want any indication of how much I overhit that, there's the ball, there's the back edge of the green, there's the flag. That is ridiculous. I can only imagine I got a little bit of a fly and I just caught the down slope there because that was massive. Right, this is now a very dangerous chip because if I go a yard past that flag, 
I'm gonna make myself look very, very stupid. I'm gonna have about a 60 footer coming back. Got a 54 degree. I'm gonna try and land it just on the front edge of the green with a little bit of roll. Sit, sit, oh my God. Oh my God. I think to be honest with you guys, by the time I take the camera up there, it'll still be rolling down the hill. You can just enjoy the walk with me. There it is. Absolutely miles away. I played it really well, but it came off. It came off firing, to be honest. What a scrappy end. So anything past here, now is the slope. And now it's the big slope. Okay. Not great. Lovely strike. Struck the ball great from start to finish on this hole. I <laughs> just keep smashing it everywhere all over the place. Right, I don't, I don't massively regret that third shot either because I normally chip too much with a 58 degree. So I'm trying to get the 54 into my, into my repertoire a little bit more, but that one just seemed to go too far. And I've got this for bogey. Guys, I could finish two over. Really don't feel like I deserve that. Right, it's downhill, right to left just outside the right edge, dead weight. Come on, he's rolled the rock quite nicely today. Okay. Slightly disappointing finish. Hopefully you've learned a lot from today's video. If you have, please do jump in the comment section below. Tell me what you've learned, how has it helped? Also tell me the content you would like to see in the future always happy to get some new ideas from you and deliver what you want to see. But guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.